Hi, this is Chris Morales from Innovation Health Services. I'm going to walk through another case um, of a 19-year-old male who presented to the emergency department with acute chest pain and elevated troponins. Uh, this patient had a family history of premature coronary disease um, and uh, the decision was made to proceed with coronary CTA. We did modify this protocol to evaluate for delayed enhancement because we were also concerned for uh, potential myocarditis. And uh, that protocol um, requires one extra step. We start with the, the standard coronary CTA protocol. We inject about 100 cc's, anywhere between 80 and 100 cc's of, uh, of contrast at five to six cc's per second. Um, and then to, uh, to, to add on the delayed enhancement portion, after that initial bolus, we then um, inject an additional 50 to seven cc's of contrast at a slow rate, uh, around two cc's per second. Um, we reconstruct the images as we normally would for the coronary CTA portion of the exam. And then um, after, after the injection of that last 50 to uh, 70 mLs of contrast, we wait about five to seven minutes before we acquire a second data set through the heart. And that would be the data set that we evaluate the myocardium for patterns of delayed enhancement. And so um, what I have up here is our uh, initial arterial phase, the coronary CTA data set. Uh, we have nice dilation of the coronary arteries. Um, just kind of scanning through here in the axial plane, we do see that this, uh, this patient has right dominance. We see the right coronary artery originating from the right sinus of Valsalva, the left main originating from the left sinus of Valsalva. The left main is free of plaque and stenosis. There's a trifurcation with the ramus intermedius branch, the LAD coursing along the anterior interventricular groove. Uh, the proximal LAD looks clean. Uh, there's an early takeoff of a diagonal branch. Uh, mid LAD is also clean, no, no plaque, no stenosis. And then coming down distally, again, it tapers out smoothly, no plaque, no stenosis. As we scroll back, take another look at the diagonal vessels. So these vessels are nice and dilated, um, which allows us to, to evaluate them pretty easily just through the axial data set. Um, looking at the RCA, I'm sorry, the, uh, the left circumflex. The left circumflex comes off here, um, proximal segment free of plaque and stenosis gives off a couple of small obtuse marginal branches of course laterally along the left ventricle. We have the mid and distal segments of the circumflex which you know are uh, very small in caliber. We have an obtuse marginal that uh, extends out laterally which looks like it's clean as well. All right, let's look at the RCA, proximal RCA, no plaque, no stenosis, mid RCA, also free of plaque and disease, distal vessel, widely patent, no plaque, no stenosis. Our posterior descending artery is unremarkable. So I think it's pretty clear based on these images that there's no evidence of any uh, coronary artery disease to explain the patient's chest pain and troponinemia. To evaluate um, the delayed enhancement data set, so we, re, we uh, reconstruct the images um, after waiting the seven minutes uh, following IV injection. And what I have here, I've already used Terra Recon uh, to reconstruct in my standard cardiac planes, four chamber, two chamber, and short axis. And as I go through my um, short axis here, I'm at the basal part of the heart. You can see here along the, the lateral, uh, infralateral um, segments of the basal myocardium, we have this subepicardial area of delayed enhancement. And you can also see that nicely on the four chamber view. So that pattern is very uh, commonly observed on, uh, on uh, delayed enhancement MRI. When, uh, when we evaluate patients for myocarditis using cardiac MRI, 
Uh, we get subepicardial delayed enhancement along the basal to mid uh, infralateral wall. And so this nicely demonstrates that CT is capable of also evaluating patterns of delayed enhancement. Um, some of the technical modifications that I made, I reconstructed these images using thick MPRs. So that, uh, that gives you a little bit more signal to noise. And I'm also using a very narrow um, reconstructed image width so that uh, um, you know, I, can, I can really make the areas of uh, contrast enhancement pop out against the background myocardium. So again, just to recap the, uh, the modifications to the protocol uh, were simply the addition of uh, another 50 to 70 cc's of contrast after um, the standard amount of high flow rate contrast for the coronary CTA. Um, we inject that, la that latter 50 to 70 cc's at a slow rate, about two cc's per second. And then we wait five to seven minutes to acquire the second phase of, uh, of images through the chest. And using those images, we, we can look at the, uh, the myocardium for the pattern of delayed enhancement. Um, if, we, if we go through the rest of the, the myocardial segments here, we do see in the mid-segment there is a tiny bit of uh, subepicardial delayed enhancement as well. Um, and then kind of extending out here into the apical segments not seen a whole lot, but clearly there's no ischemic pattern um, uh, or uh, any evidence of infarct. We don't see any subendocardial delayed enhancement um, that would suggest that there is a there is an infarct. So this is a very suggestive case of myocarditis.